in child's pose to allow your forehead to come to the ground and completely release there as the heaviness of the head releases down to the ground and allows your neck to relax, your face to start relaxing. Place your arms in a position that is helping you to feel that you don't need to engage your muscles in any way. So sometimes it's helpful, especially if you feel like your nose is kind of being pushed down to the ground to place the hand underneath the forehead. I, I personally really like this variation of child's pose. And allow your belly as well to relax, whether it's in between the legs or whether it's pressing towards your thighs. Let it relax. And if it's pressing against your thighs, then you're receiving a really nice massage there in your intestinal organs, which is so good for us, especially in the morning. And if the knees are wider, you're still getting a benefit in that sense because it's pressing the sides of the abdomen. So start connecting now with your breath. And connecting with that sensation of here I am coming back to practice. And I was reflecting this morning on actually a few months ago that I was in India in Varanasi and we would wake up at 4 a.m. every day, maybe not earlier, and we would go at 5 at that daily ritual, that puja which is a daily ritual that they do everywhere in India. Every morning they wake up super early and they light up the candles and they set up the fire and they start chanting. And there's a big celebration every single day to celebrate just the simplicity of here we are again. We come as we are. beginning this day as something new and special, celebrating our beingness, being here, being now. So we might not have really put into our let's say the modern yoga world, these practices as much, especially if it's a 75 minute yoga class and the main thing we want to do is actually move our body. But we can connect with that intention of every day coming back to our practice where we're beginning with this intention to fill our body and to celebrate it. Take a couple more breaths into the sides of your chest as we enter our ritual that looks like this today. With every exhale, allow your body to settle even more into that pool of gravity. And just noticing how you feel and also maybe setting your intention for this morning, for this day, for this week, for this practice. What is that brings you back into this practice? And then slowly from here, come up, pressing the hands down. We're going to transition into all fours and extend the left leg into the same height as your hip, but just bring it down, uh, out, foot comes down to the ground. And then as you inhale, extend the left arm up, look up, open the chest, stretch it out. 
right shoulder blade comes back. And as you exhale, bring the left arm under, place the shoulder down if you can, and the right hand will support you there. As the head comes down, gaze towards the right. So it's kind of like, it's quite an intense shape, especially for the morning. So we're opening around the left shoulder, the back. If you have the space and you feel you would like to go there, you can extend the right arm up, but this would happen only if your left shoulder is really grounded to the earth. Maybe your spine starts clicking. If the right arm is up, you can wrap it around your waist. And again, infuse your shape with breath. Relax the jaw. And then if your left arm is wrapped around, unwrap it. Gaze down towards the ground, keep your left arm where it is and extend your right arm forward. And now place the forehead down and soften through the chest even more. So now it's kind of more like a one arm into um, Anahata Asana and the other one grounding. So you will feel a different sensation around the heart space, around the underarms. Two more breaths, softening the chest down. And you will also feel your inner thigh, of course, of the left leg. Breathe it there. Now slide your right hand next to your forehead. Press the hands down, and we're just going to come up. Bring the left leg back in into all fours. Let's add our music actually. So if you have the morning flow playlist, just click on the first song, the tambura. It, it actually has the sounds of India there. So you get to connect with the tradition as well. Let's extend the right leg out. Right arm up to the sky, breath in. Feel the chest opening, really press the right hand out and away. And then as you exhale, thread it under. So the right shoulder comes down to the earth. The left hand is pressing towards the ground by your forehead. It's a deep shape, although it doesn't look like, but you will feel it in the inner thigh as well as around the shoulder. If you have a space and the right shoulder is grounded, you can wrap the left arm around. And using the architecture of our body, the bones stacking on top of the other, so that they ground towards the earth, and then the, shoulder, the muscles around them can start to melt. Teta, bring the right leg out to the side. Not like this, have a little look. So your right leg is like this, like a kickstand, right arm up, and then comes under. It's just a different way of doing it. Good. And then maybe the left arm comes up and around, wraps around your waist if you haven't done so already. I'm not sure if I told you. Take a full breath into the spine, side body. If you practiced with me yesterday, probably your obliques are extremely sore. <laughs> Mine are. And then slowly unwrap the left arm, extend it forward, and turn your head Sorry, right arm down. No, I'm at the opposite side. Okay, let me find the same side as you are. So left arm extends forward, right shoulder is down, and the forehead now grounds. So it's kind of like an Ahata Asana, but your right arm is underneath you. you. Take two breaths. Very conscious.
and then sliding the left hand by the forehead, press the ground, start lifting up, coming back to all fours. From here, let's inhale, tuck the toes, open the chest, look forward into cow. Exhale, press back, chest to thighs, downward dog. Roll forward to plank, inhale. Exhale, bend the knees but hover them off the floor. We did this last week. Then bring the chest towards the thighs and extend back, downward dog. Few more rounds like that. Start connecting now with your body, with your spine. Inhale, forward to plank, broad collarbone. Exhale, knees hover off the floor, but it looks like you're in cow. Chest to thighs. And then exhale, hips up and back down dog. Let's come through that. Couple more rounds. Inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, knees hover. Inhale, chest to thighs. Exhale, down dog. One more, inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, knees hover. Inhale, press chest to thighs. Exhale, downward dog. High up onto the toes, inhale. Exhale, heels to the right, knees to the left. Bend them, stretch your left side body. Relax your head. It's like this sideways downward dog that we do. Inhale, back to downward dog. Exhale, high up onto the toes, then bend the knees, sink the hips towards the left, knees to the right, heels to the left. Stretching your right side. Let's keep going like that. Inhale up, high up into the toes, downward dog. Exhale to the right. Inhale up, down dog, high up into the toes. Exhale to the left. Take it back into regular downward dog. Start walking forward towards the top of the mat. Let's take a little malasana. Open the feet wider, toes out, heels in, take it into a squat, palms together. Let's inhale just to open the chest, crown to sky, tailbone to earth. Exhale, bow in, coil in, soften your front body. Twice more, inhale, just adding pulsation where we start feeling the prana moving in our body. And exhale, bowing in. You can have your eyes closed to connect with your own rhythm. Inhale, opening up, pressing the inner thighs, crown to sky. Exhale, hugging down, bowing to earth. Bring the hands down, extend your legs in Uttanasana. Bring the feet hip width apart and relax your upper body on your thighs as you hold opposite elbows and sway from side to side. Really relax your upper body. And when we allow our bodies to come into these more intuitive movements where there's no specific instruction on how we're gonna sway from side to side, then we start connecting with, oh, this is what feels good and I would like to do like that. So, I always encourage you to find the ways of the asanas that serve your body. And then release your hands down. Let's roll up one vertebra at a time. The knees are bent, the tailbone that comes down as the spine rolls up. Each vertebra is stacking on top of the other. Neck relax. And then roll the shoulders back. And then coming to the Sriya Namaskar ritual, classical variation, which is my favorite from India. So feet together or hip width, palms to the heart, and really flow with your breath in a way that you feel you connect. As if you're going into this trance where you don't need to think, it's just this movement meditation. 
So let's come together, inhaling, reaching the arms up, opening the chest, breath in. Exhale, folding, Uttanasana. Left leg back, knee down, inhale, look forward. Right leg back, hold the breath in to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin. Inhale into cobra, shoulders back. Open the chest. Exhale, Abha Mukha, press it back, down dog. Left leg forward, right knee down. Inhale, open chest, breathe into the right hip flexor. Exhale, Uttanasana, folding, relax your neck. Inhale, press to come up with a flat back using your glutes. Arms up, open chest. Exhale, hands to the heart center, tailbone to earth. Exhale. Again, inhale, arms up, reach. Exhale, fold slowly. Right leg back, knee down, inhale. Open the chest. Give the breath in, step it to plank. Exhale, knees, chest and chin. Inhale, cobra, shoulders back. Good, exhale, press it back, down dog. It's like a continuous movement. Right leg forward, left knee down, inhale. And most of you have practiced it so much with me. So now it's like a second nature. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up. Just the sky. Exhale, hands to heart. Again, breathing in, reaching up. Exhale, folding, navel to spine. Left leg back, knee down, inhale, chest broadens, keep the hands grounded. Keep the breath in, right leg back, plank. Exhale, knees, chest and chin. Inhale, cobra, shoulders back. Press the pelvis down, strong legs. Exhale, Adho Mukha. Left leg forward, right knee down. Inhale, chest opens. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Head heavy. Inhale, press the feet, use your glutes, come up. Open the chest. Exhale, hands to heart. Again, breath in, reaching. Exhale, fold forward. This could be your daily practice if you don't have a teacher every day. Right leg back, knee down, inhale. You will instantly feel the effect. Left leg back, plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra. Toes to the ground, open chest. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Right foot forward, left knee down, inhale. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, come up, reach and lengthen. Exhale, hands to heart. No one movement is rushed. We'll keep going, two more rounds, inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Left leg, inhale. Right leg back, breath, hold. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra, shoulders back and down. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, press it back. Left leg forward, right knee down, inhale. Exhale, use your core to bring the right foot forward, fold it out. Inhale, all the way up, reach. Nice, everyone. Exhale, hands to heart. One more round. Inhale, arms up, lift. Exhale, fold it out. Right leg back, knee down. Let's up, Chandra, reach the arms up. Inhale. Exhale, hands down. Left leg back, breath in. 
Knees down, chest and chin, exhale. Inhale, cobra, strong back, open chest. Exhale, Adho Mukha. Right foot forward, left knee down. Arms reach up, inhale. Exhale, Uttanasana. Come out all the way, inhale. Exhale, hands to heart. Stay for a moment, couple of breaths. Just feel the effect. 12 rounds of this is just your morning espresso. It's even better. So before espresso, do that. Okay, and let's add a flowing with Katasana, which you know how much I love. Keep the feet separated hip width. Reach the arms up. Inhale as you sink the hips way towards the heels. Now as we inhale, we'll open a little bit the chest, but the knees stay bent. The exhale, we dive and brush, chest to thighs, arms come back. Twice more, inhale. Exhale, chest to thighs. One more, inhale. Exhale, chest to thighs. Come up with Katasana, inhale, exhale, fold it out, interlace the hands behind you, Dvikonasana. The knees can be bent, the chest can rest into the thighs, and allow your upper body to find space. Good, breathe into the shoulders. Relax your neck and your jaw. I encourage you to practice with the eyes closed as much as you can. And slowly release the hands down. Adho Tanasana, inhale, open the chest. Exhale, walk or jump back through a vinyasa. So either plank to chaturanga, either cobra or upward dog, and then back to downward facing. Let's just spend a few breaths here in downward dog, just establishing the connection of the hands to the earth and the feet to the earth, really pressing through both. Notice what happens when you actively press the palms down. How does this rooting has an effect in the whole posture. Let's find a horse breath here. So just uh, put a little moisture in your lips. Inhale. And then the exhale is like. <clears throat> One more, inhale. Good. Let's bring the feet together, reach the right leg up. As you inhale, keep the hips square. And exhale, step the right foot forward. Release the left knee down. Reach the arms up, Anjaneyasana. Inhale. We're going to hold a few breaths. Bring the hands in Pristanjali, so palms come like in a reverse prayer position. Rest your head onto the biceps. Keep reaching up with the palms and opening the chest to the sky. Focus on this left line where the hip flexor starts to open. Good. And the more you kind of pull the mat towards you as if you want to create a wrinkle between your right heel and your left knee, the more you will feel that stretch. Take one more breath in here. And as you exhale, circle the arms around. Whoops. Bring them down and fall forward Ardha Hanuman over your right leg. So this is a simple shift of the hips from Anjaneyasana 
we just shift back. Nothing else changes. Couple of breaths. Undulate your spine a little bit here. So feeling the waves of the breath entering from the tailbone and rippling towards the crown. So again, we allow prana to move. We're not um, contracting, but we're rather flowing, connecting to this flow, to this rhythm. On our next inhale, we're going to shift forward in Tanjani Asana again, but take it a little bit further. So we're going to bring the right arm up and then circle the right arm back and bring the left arm up. Recline forward. So we practiced this yesterday as well in this spear pose. So you're leaning forward as if somebody is pulling your left hand and the right hand towards the back. So again, here, you connect with the hip flexor. Now feel that energy of the left hand being pulled forward and then all the way up. And turn towards your right for a twist. So hook the elbow outside the knee. So I can't twist. I'm going to just look at you. Breathe into the spine. It doesn't have to be your deepest twist because we're going to come uh, in a moment in deeper variations. So we're just giving some um, suggestions. We introduce things, we breathe into them, and we find depth as we go further into the practice. Make sure the collarbone is broad. Last two breaths. On your inhale, come up, turn, keep that uh, low lunge into a twist, and then release the left hand down. We're going to transition, bring the right foot to the back of the mat. The left shin will turn uh, vertically to the mat and open your right side body. Open so, so much. Now this right foot will keep coming back as if you're going into a wild thing and you will start opening the chest towards the sky. If you want, you can place the hand behind your head and rest the head onto your right hand. Two more breaths. It's like a supported wild thing. Now from here, with the aid of your hand, bring your head to the center. And now look down, bring your right knee towards your chest. Maybe the right hand hovers, or if you need it, it can come down. And step the right foot forward. This time, turn the shin to the other way. And we're gonna come into like a Vira 2 position here. Good. Let's inhale into a reverse. The left hand comes down. Open the chest. Good. Your right side body opens. And then allow the right hand to come through the front into like a Parjva Konasana, left arm up and over. Stay with the breath. The right hand can come inside your right foot. So I want you to focus on your hip opening here. The hand aids you to breathe into your hips your arm as it pushes the um, thigh bone out. But also when you press your pelvis forward, notice how you start feeling your hip flexor again. Last full breath. Good. Bring both hands down. Turn the left foot back into the lunge position, bring the hands down, lift the knee. Now from here, engage the core, bring the right knee into like a bakasana plank, and then send the right leg all the way back. Inhale, 
Ekapada Adamuka. Exhale, bring it down. Or if you want to flow through one legged vinyasa, shift forward to plank. Inhale. And exhale into Chaturanga, knees, chest, or all the way to the ground. Inhale into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. And then exhale back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Couple of breaths. Re-establishing connection to breath, to heartbeat. And what we want to cultivate here is this sensation of this organic flow where we're really becoming aware of the subtle body rather than just moving inside asanas mindlessly and pushing too far, too quick, too soon. Okay, let's bring the feet together, reach the left leg up to the sky, inhale. Exhale, step the left foot forward, right knee descends. Anjana Asana, with Pistanjali, the other hand to the front. Press the palms together, biceps come together. The head rests. And then you have two opposing actions with your left foot, which is one, you're pressing the foot down to lift the chest up, but also dragging back to pull the pelvis forward and down. So it's actually quite an intense shape if you do it right. But then through this intensity, how can you now allow the breath to be just a breath of fresh air that removes that agitation? When you feel the breath just moving your blood and removing blockages. Slowly release the hands, circle them back, bring them down, Ardha Hanuman, fold over the left leg. So, noticing as well here the differences between a shape where we press up and open the heart and then a shape where we bow down and we release. How does it feel different, not only in the physical body, but how it corresponds into emotion and sensation? Two more breaths here. Relaxing something with every exhale. Where do you hold your tension? Good. Let's come forward again. Breath in. The left hand comes up. And then that circles the right arm up. Inhale. And then spear pose. Come forward. Recline. Imagine as if you're being pulled from the right hand and the left hand. Soften through the right side of the pelvis. Don't collapse in your joints. Keep the muscles engaged. Now as you inhale, bring it up. Turn to the left, hook the elbow outside the knee for a twist. If that's too intense, you could be in this shape. Pregnancy variation. Good. Collarbones are smiling happily. They're not collapsed towards one another. Your jaw is soft. There's no space between your teeth. And there's no wrinkle between the eyebrows. When you close your eyes and you breathe, unless you need your eyes open for balance.
Two more breaths. Good. As you inhale, come up. Keep that low lunging twist. And then the right arm will, so, will circle up, press, and come into this, sorry, wrong, my mistake. Right hand down, left foot steps back, left arm up and over. So first coming into the supported wild thing. Good. Left arm up and over. And then circle the left foot back towards you, towards your uh, right foot. So you start opening the chest more up towards the sky. Maybe hold your head. If you do so, the elbow hugs in towards the temple and the head presses back. Breathe into your heart space, into the rib cage. Exhales from the mouth can be very enjoyable. Good. Then bring your head towards center. Look down, left knee towards your belly. If you can, keep the left hand off the floor and then step the left foot forward using your abdomen. Now we turn into this Vira 2 shape. So we come up. First, reversing it, right hand to earth, left arm up and over. Just take a full mindful breath. And then keep the left arm circling forward from the front of your face. Elbow to knee, right arm up and over. Stretching your right side body and pressing your right hip bone the same direction as your right me. So tailbone lengthens down. If you have the space for Parsva Konasana, left hand inside left foot. Nice everyone. And actively press the left tricep into the inner thigh and breathe into your hip opening. Good, come up into second warrior. And then exhale, both hands down, turning the feet back to neutral lunge position. Inhale, open the chest here. Exhale, palms land down. Knee towards the tricep, hugging as if you're in a one-legged bakasana. Hold, use your core. And send it back, Ekapada Adha Mukha, left leg to sky. And now choose whether you want to flow through a one-legged vinyasa or two. So up to you, inhaling in plank. Exhaling Chaturanga, knees chest or all the way to earth. Into your back bend, make it nice and freeing, rise up. Exhale, send it back, Adha Mukha. Good. Let's look forward and either walk or jump to the top of your mat. Keep the feet hip width apart. Take a half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold it out. Notice this Uttanasana in comparison to the first one that we flew, that we uh, landed in at the beginning of, of the class. Good. And then on our next breath in, we're going to bend the knees, come back to Utkatasana. Good. Let's hold this Utkatasana for about three, four breaths. Make sure that you can see your toes past your knees. The tailbone lengthens down, your navel comes towards the spine. Good, now from here, come onto your toes, heels up. And then start coiling in through the core and bring the hands to the earth. See how close your knees are to your armpits. And if you have the space, come into Bakasana. 
shifting the weight forward and make this detailed and minimal the elbows hug in towards one another good the collarbone is broad gaze forward make sure there's enough space between your feet and your hands nice everyone grace bend your elbows yes good nice okay take an uttanasana once you're done and then two options either you just jump back into a vinyasa or you can jump back from bakasana so if you want to go for that make your way back into bakasana and then shoot it back flow through a vinyasa good especially pay attention to the back bend after bakasana relax your abdomen and then press it back. Let's come to the second wave of our sequence. Feet together, reach the right leg up to sky, take it slowly, don't rush this movement. Exhale, step the right foot forward. One breath, one movement, inhale into Anjaneyasana just to open it up. Exhale, Ardha Hanuman, fold in. Just preparing us for what to come next. Right foot down, back knee lifts, crescent. Circle the arms back. And now we're coming to the same movement. Right arm up, left arm up, inhale, the right hand is down. And exhale into spear pose, reclining forward. Good. Keeping your left arm at the same height as your ear, and there's this diagonal. Good, release the left hand down to the earth and reach the right arm up. So you're in a twisted lunge. Good, bring the right hand onto the shoulder and then with your right elbow, draw a circle forward and down as if you want to touch the floor with your elbow. And then inhale, bring it all the way up, open the chest. One more. This is about opening up the back of the rib cage. As you open up, transition through side plank into wild pin. Open the chest. Relax your right leg. Good. Take one more breath here. Now turn to look down. Right knee towards your chest. Step it forward. Left heel to the ground. Second warrior. We're going to flow it from here. Inhale, reverse. Straighten the right leg into reverse trikonasana. Shift forward into regular trikonasana. Let's wrap the left arm around the waist as if you want to touch your right inner thigh. And then we'll add a little more flow. So bend the right leg, reverse. Keep the left arm hand where it is. Straighten and come forward. One more, bend the knee. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale, shift. Good, stay as you are, turn the chest to the sky, left shoulder back. Soft, relaxed neck. Now look down. We're going to move to Ardha Chandrasana. Maybe with the left hand where it is. Maybe you need a block for this one. So shift it forward. Left leg lifts. 
left arm still is wrapped around. Nice, everyone. The right hand pushes down. If you want, bend your left leg and cut your left foot. Open it into the back bend. Space, breath. Or keep it to the previous variation if this is not serving you right now. From here, we're going to take it back into that trikonasana, left foot down. Press to come all the way up. Turn the right toes in so you end up in a prasarita shape. And then we're going to come towards the top of the mat. So bend your left leg. And let's try this. So as if you're pushing. And then make your way to the right side of the mat. So we're going to work a little bit more on our glutes. We're going to bring the right leg over into Garudasana. And then we're going to unwrap. We're going to move through those two asanas. Bring the left leg back and start bend, sorry, the right leg back, start bending the, right, the left leg as if you were going to touch the floor, but then resist and come up and cross again. It's a torture. Your hands can be out. Inhale. Exhale. If you need, of course, touch down. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. Hip circle. Exhale. Hold it. If you want, bring the hand down. Hold, hold, hold. Imagine as if you would touch your left, your right foot. And press it up. Garudasana. Good. We're going to go once more all the way down now. So from Garudasana, hip opens. Now it's going to touch. Whoo! Let's open it to like a pigeon here. It's not exactly a pigeon, it's like a more lunge pigeon. Inhale, left arm opens. And then turn it in. Step it back. Downward dog. Stretch your legs. Flow through a vinyasa or take child's pose. Up to you. Good. Let's all take a child's pose now. And then we'll just come into the other side. And then I'll offer you lots of stretching. So in child's pose, taking your time to press that reset button. Reconnect to the intention that you said at the beginning. Or maybe there is a new intention coming up that feels more aligned and relevant. And let's slowly make our way back to Adamuka. Keep the eyes closed if you can. And then feet together, left leg reaches out to sky, keeps stay square. And exhale, step it forward. Right knee lands down. Anjani Asana, breath in. Circle the arms out of the Hanuman Asana fold. Inhale into crescent. 
First, circling both arms. And then bringing left arm forward, right arm forward. It brings us up slightly, and then we're coming to spear. So notice the difference between being here, and so it's like more open, and then boom, we come forward, the belly draws in. There's a different mood to it. And then bring the right hand down and twist to the left. Bring the left hand to the left shoulder. Inhale as you open, as if you're by yourself opening your shoulder to sky and exhale, circle the elbow towards the ground feeling the backs of your ribs opening. One more, inhale, open. Exhale, bring it down. Good, from here, let's shift. Left foot comes back behind you, wild thing. Open the chest, press the right hand down, find freedom. And then look down, knee to navel, step forward, second warrior. Right heel lands down, open it up. And we'll add our flow. First reverse, extend left leg, shift forward, keep a little bend into the knee, especially the first time, so that your hip doesn't click. Right arm up, and then wrap it around. Good, and let's keep that flow. Inhale, through second warrior reverse. Press left leg extend. Exhale, reach, left hand comes down. One more, inhale, reverse, knee bends. Exhale, press. Reverse triangle. Inhale and exhale as you come forward and down. Hold, press the right shoulder back. Trikonasana helps us to create space, the pelvis, and the abdomen, and the shoulders. It's supposed to be a spacious shape. And connect. Whenever you can close your eyes, connect with that inner space. Now we'll prepare to move to Adha Chandrasana. Gaze towards the earth, bend your left leg, heel to the back foot, and shift whether you need a, a block or not, up to you. Spanning through all directions. The right hand can stay wrapped around or you can touch the foot from your back. And then press. Press to open into the back bend, creating space in the quadricep. Keep gazing down for balance. And then extend the right leg, bring it back to that triangle and come all the way up. Turn the left toes in. Let's practice that pressing. So right leg bends, push, push, and then bring it next to your left. Okay, so exhale here. If you need to shake the legs and then left knee to chest comes into Garuda left knee to chest circles right knee bends it's like a curtsy and then we come up and cross inhale Knee to chest. 
exhale. You can have this here in case you're about to fall and come up, cross, in, hold if you can, couple of breaths, go as low as you can, inner thighs so strong, belly so strong. Good, press up. Last one. Whew. Cross or leave it if it's just a torture. And let's take it into all the way to the ground. Left hand comes down. Replace the right foot in a way that you can open the right toes point towards the side of your mat. And then bring both hands down. Right knee towards the bicep, sorry, tricep, and then send it back. Adho Mukha. Stretch it out. Flow through your vinyasa. Your shoulders back. Press the floor, Grace, even more. Press the floor, press the floor. Free your neck. Yes. And then glide back. Adho Mukha, okay. Let's make our way into pigeon pose. But actually we're gonna make it a little bit differently. So walk forward and just sit down. And we're gonna come into pigeon through a different way. So, I would love for you to come into this like a seated squat position. And then from here, we're going to lift the toes. If you need support, you can put, keep your hands behind. And then place the toes down and lift your heels. Let's do this once more. Toes lift up, heels lift up. Now as your heels are up, turn towards one side, one knee comes down. So you have like a two, two squares with your legs and then come forward and down. As you inhale, come back up, we're just gonna flow through the two sides a few rounds. Exhale, heels are lifted, maybe the hands are behind you. You're shifting to the other side. This, cre this creates a lot of Mobility in the hips. Inhale here. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come up. Exhale, same thing. Rolling through the toes, shifting. Your core needs to participate. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come up. Exhale, change. Inhale, lift, exhale, fold. Now we're gonna come back to the right, inhale up, or whichever leg was the leg that you began with. Switch. This time we're gonna marinate, so come forward and folding. Now this is one way of pigeon where both legs are bent. If you, for some reason, absolutely prefer the other pigeon where the back leg is extended, just extend your leg back. It's just kind of the same um, benefits that we get, depending on our hips. We feel it differently, and I'm sure you've practiced the other one a thousand of time, thousands of times. So why not try this one? And you can keep your right shin perfectly squared. Where with the other one, the heel comes very close to the pubis. So we're gonna hold this pigeon actually for more than a minute. So I want you to feel like you're starting to settle. And 
If you need to support your forehead with your hands or with a block, do so, so that you don't put extra weight there. Eyes closed. And also, if you find that you don't quite feel that shape, you can always use your hands to manage that. So if you're getting into this shape, what you want to feel is a really nice stretch in the outer area of your leg whichever leg is at the front. And the hip joint to get a little bit of attention or a lot. Focusing on the exhales. Four more breaths. Make the last exhales so worth it as if you're just sinking in deeper and deeper. And then bring your hands under the shoulders, press to come up. Good, let's switch the legs, breath in. As you come back to that malasana, bring for a moment both uh, elbows in, catch your ankles, open the chest, and then switch it over to the other side. So it's two squares. The front shin is uh, it's parallel to the front of your mat. And then the right knee is the same height, as your right hip. So you turn towards the other side of your mat and fold over the shin that's at the front. And if you want to extend the right leg back or the, the leg that it's at the back anyway, can do so. If you need support under the head, you can use your hands or a prop. And as we are in this shape, We can now become more aware of where is the shape creating any triggers. What does it require from us? Does it require to just enjoy if it feels particularly enjoyable? Does it require some very meticulous breath and patience? How does the breath respond? The breath is always the best feedback for how any situation is influencing us. It can be an asana during the yoga practice. It can be a conversation. It could be a song, hearing the news. Having a thought. There's always a response in our breath.
And when we attune to that, we can become aware of how we're responding in our nervous system into each of the, each of these situations. And we can honor that. So many times it has happened where we know very much, very well, how a particular situation is influencing us, we know how we want to respond, and then we just don't because we're afraid of something not being accepted or we don't want to make a big deal out of it. But through this practice, we just are learning and reprogramming ourselves to attune better into all these reactions and respond in a way that is beneficial to us. Last full breath. In your next breath in, press the floor to come up. Come to center, extend the legs wide, Upavishta Konasana. Press to fold forward. The legs are wide, the root is down to the earth. Any amount, doesn't matter how far you go. What matters is can you tap into those areas that need space? Can you understand where you feel that you're being blocked? And bring the attention there. That's the exercise really. Keep the neck long, keep the shoulders away from the ears. Eyes closed. And even if you just stay upright, that's absolutely fine. Some of us can still feel it just by trying to sit upright. Last four breaths, make them count. Very aware of those breaths. And slowly press the floor, come up. Bring the hands under the knees, bring the legs together. And let's come on our backs. So either rolling slowly or a bit more quickly, I'm gonna offer you the option to have the block underneath the chest for a few breaths before we come into Shavasana. If you don't have a block or a prop or anything that you could put underneath, then maybe you would like to come into a set of Bandasana where you lift the hips up just to open a little bit through the front body. So you're either coming here for a few breaths, really in a lunar manner where you don't excite your nervous system, or then if you have a block, you're gonna place, place it in the middle of the thoracic spine, so not at the lower back. That means when your head comes to the floor or maybe a cushion, your neck doesn't feel like it's uh, like you're choking. I want your neck to feel fine so you have 
easy airflow and the hands open, the arms open to the sides, feet are down. And if you're going into a set of bandhasana, if you don't have a pro, then you're only spending about five breaths and then you come down. And you just stay there doing nothing. If you have the block, allow the back of the heart to really soften towards the block. So the block is in the shoulder blade area and you're just feeling the chest opening, breathing at the front and the back. If you don't have the block, you're just on your back, maybe take a happy baby. Good. And eventually we're gonna end up in Shavasana so if you want to keep the block and stay there for the whole Shavasana, it's actually a nice passive back bend. If you're in happy baby, then spend a couple more breaths there and then make your way into Shavasana. Palms facing the sky. Legs relaxed. Jaw relaxed, space between the teeth. As if every wrinkle also in your face is becoming more smooth. Just feeling your whole body touching the earth. Resting, replenishing, recharging.
The last few moments. Feel the breath entering your whole body, washing away anything that you don't need to keep throughout this week. Anything that may be created, some sort of unwanted emotions in the past few days. I'm just resolving to begin again this day as a celebration, but just being alive and healthy in these very interesting times that we're living that are going to reset us all as a collective. As you deepen your breath, bring the arms up overhead. Stretch it out. Notice the spaciousness you have created in your body. And then roll onto one side very gently. Come into a seated position. Palms one on top of the other at the heart space, connecting with your heartbeat. Another super useful way to check in with yourself. And let's chant one ohm together to close the practice. Inhale. Uh... Place the hands, bring them on top of your head into Anjali on top of the head, like you're placing a little crown, and then bring them to the forehead, bowing in. Namaste. Thank you.